Hi, this is Bill Stinnett with Sales Excellence. And today we're gonna to talk about how do we invest more of our time and spend less of it. You know, when it comes to money, it's real easy to see the difference between spending and investing. Now, we spend money on lots of things. We spend money, let's say, on, on cars, on vacations, on clothing and food and, and variety of things that we have to buy. But there's a big difference between spending money on things that we need or that we want and investing money. When we invest money, what are the expectation is, of course, we're going to buy something that not only is going to help hopefully retain its value, but it's actually going to appreciate in value over time. So we invest money, let's say, in a house. And while we own that house, hopefully the value of that house increases and it's going to be worth more when we're done. We invest money in stocks or bonds or precious metals or something, expecting that we're going to retain our investment, our initial principal, and get some return too. But let me ask you, do we think about how we spend versus invest our time? I think too much of our work week is spent on spending <laughs> and not enough of our work week is invested so let's look at the difference here what are some of the ways that we spend our time I gotta tell you the one that seems to come up most often when I talk to salespeople about this is we spend so much time in customer service kinds of things and I know it's not your fault you didn't ask for it, perhaps. Maybe your company has done away with some of the support that used to be around you, but we tend to spend way too much of our time fielding calls from customers who need help with some sort of an invoicing issue. They've got a problem with delivery. Um, they, they don't know who to call for this or for that, or, or, or you've become the, the go-to person that they always reach out to anytime they have a question. And that's fine, I guess because I want to be the first first point of contact for them and I want to help them all I can but in a lot of cases you're doing the job or you're taking over the job of some other people in your organization that could be helping you and I know some of you are saying I got to do it all myself I want them to always call me first I, I get the spirit of that the problem is, is that if you spend a lot of your week fielding these kinds of calls and handling things that could be handled by the accounting department, could be handled by somebody in customer service, it could be handled. Now, some of you might say they won't handle it right. I'm the only one that knows how to do it. Maybe we need to get better at training some of these people how to respond and how to handle some of these issues. Maybe we need to get better at delegating, right? Handing off something to somebody and say, here's the issue. Would you look into this? Get back to the customer and then I, and you provide oversight to that. But getting good at help, getting other people involved in helping you with the things that customers call requesting. We spend a ton of our time in customer service and customer support. And some of you will argue and say, well, that's, that's actually an investment. I'm investing in retaining and keeping that customer happy. True, but you're using up your resources that could be better invested in some other ways, which we're going to talk about. Sometimes we spend way too much time in internal meetings. Now, it may not be your fault. Maybe you go to your sales manager and you say, I've looked at our calendar for the upcoming week, and I see that I've got uh, 10 hours in meetings coming up. Is there a way that we could cut an hour of that out? Or maybe two hours? Is there a way we could compress some of this stuff? I think your sales manager would be more than happy to brainstorm and figure out some ways to free up you and, and perhaps some of your colleagues to do some more selling so that you could invest some more of that time with customers, which we're gonna get at in just a second. How much of our week is spent in just procrastination, in water cooler talk, in going out to a long lunch with the gang? Now, I'm not trying to uh, really, uh, let's say, step on any toes here, but if we look at our work week, if we actually sat down and analyzed how we're using our time, I think you would find a number of ways that time is being spent that could potentially be better invested. Now guys, you're never gonna invest 100%, just the same as you're never gonna invest 100% of your money. Sometimes you spend money on a vacation, which might be an investment <laughs> in you and your family. But think about how we could invest more of our work week. Invest in what? Invest in prospecting. 
Invest in building your pipeline, finding more new sales opportunities. Heck, if we could just take one hour away from, let's say, busy work and apply that one hour toward prospecting, for many of you, that would be a 50% increase in how much time you spent in prospecting this week. Now, again, I'm not trying to step on toes, but prospecting and business development and pipeline building ends up sometimes coming in at very low on the list and, and we need to move it up the list and invest more of our time in that. We need to invest more time in proactive outreach to existing clients, right? Calling people back, seeing how that last installation went, making sure that they're actually happy with the delivery, test, checking to see when the next project is coming up and following through with things. We, all of us, I think, can do a better job of taking care of our existing clients, keeping in touch, talking about where they are today, where they want to go tomorrow, but then tomorrow, find out where they are on that day and where they want to go the day after, constantly renewing that discussion about where they are today and where they want to go in the future. We should probably invest more time face-to-face -face with customers. Those of us that have the opportunity to go see clients, we should go see clients. We all know that face-to-face -face can create far more energy and far more, let's say, cooperation and collaboration than a simple phone call can. And when we go see clients, the likelihood of meeting other people in the account while we're there increases dramatically. You always learn some things that you never knew before you went over to see them. And I think in today's age of email and other instant messaging and, and, and so forth, we've lost the fine art of going to see customers. And I would think that we could definitely invest a little more of our time there. Not the last of which, we should think about investing in ourselves. Investing in our own personal development. Now sometimes that is training, like you're doing now, congratulations. But it might be educating yourself more about your industry, about your market, about your company, the products and services that you sell, or just educating yourself more about the businesses in your area. There are a lot of things you could do to feed your mind that then your mind has more capacity to produce energy and ideas to go out and help you to earn more money. So just a few ideas. Hopefully some of this will help you. I appreciate you tuning in today. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.